Hi everyone, I'm Tim Von Rieden here at cgcookie.com and in this quick tip tutorial I'm going to show you the different steps to take to shading and lighting a gem correctly. So with that, let's get started. So here in Photoshop I have this blank canvas open and I'm using a mid-tone gray to show off the different colors that we're going to be using in our gem and since the gem itself is going to have some reflected light in the shadow it'll be easier to see on a gray background than a white one. So to start off I'm going to make a new layer and then I'm going to choose this sort of amber color and it's kind of like mid-tone brown and we won't really get to see the gem side of it until we add the different colors. So you can't just rely on one color and the different value tones to kind of describe the color you're doing but if you add multiple colors, so in this case we're going to add kind of a honey color you'll really see how the gem starts to come to life. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just creating a basic shape and just making it a solid shape, trying to make sure there's no really seen opacity through it so you can't see the background through it. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and I'm also going to lay down all the colors that I'm using on the side here so you can kind of get an idea of how many colors are being used to create this. So now I'm going to make a new layer. And from here, I'm going to start to think about, okay, where is my light coming from? And in this example, our light source is going to be coming from up above and from the left. So we can imagine it passing through the object, and then some of it will be casted on this side. So you, we have to be thinking about the material that this gem is. So the light is going to be passing through the material, and it's going to be bouncing around, and that's what kind of creates that glow effect that a gem sometimes has. And then some of that light will even pass through the object and pass into the shadow. So we'll show how that kind of works later on. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start painting in our lights and start to make this gem feel less of a brown egg. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend our lighting toward yellow. So I'm going to choose a color that's higher in value and a little more saturated since we're working with more of the light sources. And I'm going to bend my brown that we were using more toward a yellow. So we're getting more of this sort of mustard looking yellow. I'm going to lay that one on the side as well. So the initial thinking would be to start lighting it from up here and then kind of shade it around and then just keep building it up and up. But in this case, the light would be actually captured on the bottom of the object. And that's because there's no light source coming from the bottom, but it's because the light is passing through the actual surface of the object and is being captured on the bottom half of the gem. You can kind of think of it like um, how you're, you would normally shade an eyeball, where the iris is more shaded on the bottom where you can see more light and the top half is more in darkness. So if you're getting a lot of these edge lines that means that your brush might be uh, too hard so what you can do is you can lower the hardness of your brush and then from here if you blend it you can start to see how it'll just blend a little more easier. And then we want to keep doing this until we get to a point where we feel satisf satisfied drawing on top of it. And I try to keep it somewhat loose in the beginning because we can keep kind of the refining towards the, you know, near the end where this is just more laying out a foundation for us to draw on top of. So I'm not worrying too much about if it looks perfect at this point. So it's using a basic sort of gradient almost from that mustard to the brown. Something like that. So now from here, we're going to grab that yellow again. And to do that, I'm just holding Alt or Option on a Mac and grabbing that yellow. And on my color picker, I'm going to bend that light source even more toward the yellow. Choose OK. And I'm going to lay that color on the side as well. And since this one is definitely more intense, I'm not going to use it in quite the amount that I did for the last color but instead I'm going to start to kind of highlight different areas. So I'm thinking about how the light is passing through and the most intense area is being captured right on the bottom. So I don't have to spread this color all the way through like I did the last one. I'm just starting to do more of a target range. And something to add a bit more of realism is to try to split the lighting as if it's reflecting something or if a shadow got in the way. And you can see that with this line that I'm adding right there. So 
All right, so we're just going to do one more lighting pass before we get on to the highlights. So now this one, I'm going to bend toward more of an intense yellow. So I'm putting my, putting my value all the way to the top. And you can see the difference in those three colors. And I'm laying it even more selectively in the color that I just laid down. And the reason I'm choosing these colors is to get a nice mix of them and try to create a harmony between the colors. And from here, that's when we can start to add some of that reflected light that's going to be on the top of the surface. So although most of the light is being shown bounced around through the object itself, the surface has a reflective property and we want to make sure that we're reflecting it as well. So here I'm going to go ahead and grab sort of a light blue because I'm trying to avoid using pure whites. And you'll see that a lot with digital artists where they try to avoid either pure white for their highlights and pure black for their shadows. Try to use more color variations to kind of act as that source instead. So like all the colors we've been doing so far, I'm going to lay out that color on the side. And we're going to go back to thinking about that direction of the light and where it would be hitting the surface of this gem and making sure we're kind of placing it accordingly. And I'm going to place it sort of soft at first and I'm going to play around with creating sort of a, a soft, softer edge. And then from here, that's when I would go in and grab a lighter blue, so a more uh, blue that's closer to white in value, but still not pure white because I'm trying to avoid that. And then from here, I'd make the brush size smaller and then just kind of go in and then really make that highlight pop. And I see this gem being lit by the sun through a window or something where there would be a split in the lighting being casted from the wooden frame of the window. And if I was going for a hyper-realistic feel, I would try to reflect that lighting almost perfectly on the surface of the stone since it's so reflective. And there we go. So even though we have the basics of the gem shaded out, we have to be thinking about the area around the gem and how the lighting would be affecting that area as well. So then from here, I'm going to grab that initial brown that we were using, and then just choose a very dulled down version, so in saturation and slightly in value. So then from here, I'm going to make a new layer underneath of that gem layer. I'm going to start to draw out the shadow that the gem would be casting. So this is another example of where I'm just thinking about the direction of the lighting and how that would be hitting this gem and then how that gem would then cast a shadow based on the direction of the lighting. And from here, I would go in and then make the eraser tool um, smaller so that I can really edge out the edging of that shadow and make it look really clean. Something like that. And then from here, I'll make a new layer. And now we're going to start adding in the color that would be shown through into the shadow. So I'm going to grab that highlight yellow that we used for inside of the gem. And make my brush really big. Turn my hardness down. Then I'll start painting in. And you can see how it does give that nice effect as if the color is being shown through the actual object itself. If I ever feel it's too much, just take your eraser tool then. And then from this point, I would just go ahead and clean up my gem. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. When I'm doing this, I'm just trying to think of the shaping of the gem, really try to think of how the light would be hitting it, and try to clean it up the best I can. And since everything is already laid out, it's just a factor now of going in and blending it everywhere, making sure it looks correct from the different angles, and making sure that the lighting really feels like it's coming from a particular direction, and it's being responded and reflected in the gem correctly. And then once you're all done, you'll have your finished gem. And I want to thank you guys for checking out this quick tip tutorial on how to draw a gem. And thanks for watching.